All right, in this lesson here, what we're going to do is take a look at layers. Basically, it's time to start applying some color to our terrain. And we have the ability of stacking multiple layers of textures and then blending through them with alphas. Go ahead and take it away, Logan. Okay, so we'll switch back over to the Layers tab. If you remember, we created that initial layer just so we had a texture applied to our terrain. Now, what we're going to do is actually start layering these uh, these layers together, or blending them together, <laughs> exactly. so that we can have multiple textures applied to our terrain and have uh, very precise control over um, how and where those textures are displayed. So for to start out, let's go ahead and create a new layer. Now I'm going to select that undefined slot and I'm also going to go over to the textures browser and grab a new texture, one that would be noticeable, like say a nice dark one. And again, having this selected so that when the layer is first created, it'll grab this as the texture to apply to the terrain. So with this slot selected, go ahead and hit New. And the package, again, is going to be My Level. And we'll just name this one Layer 2. Alpha Width and Height, 128. That's good. And Alpha Fill Color. We're going to go ahead and leave this white so the entire terrain will become that color as soon as we apply it. And again, the UNV scale of H should work just fine. So go ahead and hit OK. And you'll notice the entire terrain just changed. That, of course, means that this is the uh, the highest layer in the stack, and its alpha is completely opaque, so the entire terrain is going to be become this color. So, we've basically just, it looks like we've changed the uh, the color, and the real power behind layers is the fact that you can still use a lot of your tools to edit them. So, I'll just go ahead and grab painting, and let me grab a bit of a radius to work with. And now you notice if I go, I can basically when I'm painting, I'm painting on the alpha that belongs to this layer. So if I was to paint like Control and right uh, and left click with this layer selected, you notice I have my strength set incredibly low. So while if I had hit this or uh, painted about 3,000 strokes, I would have gotten an effect. Let me go ahead and just crank this way back up. And now you notice as I control right click, I'm starting to uh, to take away from the value, meaning get uh, get closer to black or gray on the edges here. And I can paint away from this layer, basically painting a clear area in this layer, so we can th see through to layer one. And that way we have we are we can use the paint tool just fine and paint a, a nice detailed path. Of course, we could lower the radius in, not that much, and have a bit more control and unlock and, and you get the idea it's it's all very simple painting and what the beauty in this is the f um, the fact that it's it's so easy to uh, to set up textures like this if you had a grassy valley and you needed to cut a uh, like a dirt path into it it's as simple as simply selecting a dirt texture making a new layer and painting out your dirt path now um, of course more than just the painting will apply we can actually uh, use noise and apply noise and go back in there and it kind of added a pixelated sort of noise because it's a it's a very hard effect and we could go in there with a little bit of smoothing and then smooth that back out and it adds a nice kind of blend but a variating blend just a, a nice little trick to play with and uh, you can play around with uh, various other tools to work uh, to work with. It's generally painting, uh, smoothing, and noise that you'll want to work with a lot when uh, painting on and blending layers together. One last thing I want to do is go ahead and create a third layer just to show uh, going and creating the alpha as black initially. Remember, we completely changed the uh, the texture everywhere because this uh, this layer's alpha was opaque. If we wanted to add a new layer, but we didn't want to cover the entire terrain in it, we simply wanted to use it for small pieces, it would be a little bit more convenient to, let me find a final texture here, if we were, when we were creating the new layer, if we used an alpha fill color of black, meaning that it's completely transparent. As soon as we add this, let me name it layer 3, again all the same settings will work fine. You'll notice we have that layer. It is, in fact, on top of the stack. But because it is completely transparent, obviously it's not going to display anywhere. So if I was to select painting and then control left drag, and again, set my strength higher. And, okay, here's something good to point out. I'm working on the layers tab, but I painted out on the train itself. That's because without any layer tra uh, selected, it'll often go back to painting on the height map, even without it specifically being selected. It was still counting because there was we have three layers here, but undefined was selected. Now, if we truly wanted to paint on the layer itself, it has to be selected. Now, if I was to control left drag, you'll notice I'm starting to paint that orange te uh, texture in. And again, we had no none of this orange texture anywhere until we started painting on it, basically making part of its alpha opaque. 
so that it would be visible on the train itself. Very cool. And, of course, under the layers, you have the ability to duplicate a layer. You can delete layers and move them up and down uh, in the stack. So if you wanted to grab layer 3 and move it up one, and then you wanted to grab, say, layer 2, which is now the top, and paint away from it, you could actually paint down and get to layer 3. So you can reorder these however you want. It's very easy to work with. And um, you let's see, you can also go in... And here's something kind of interesting. Uh, remember the grid you see, if you were to look at the uh, the view in wireframe, how you have that white grid for the train itself. If you're in shaded, you select a layer, and you can actually display the grid on just that layer. And notice the only parts that have layer 2 on them, which is actually quite a bit of the, uh, the overall map, actually get that wireframe. And this could be useful in conjunction with edge turning. If you only had a very, if your jagged part of the train had a, a small patch of texture on it, you could grab the layer that belongs to that texture. And that way you can keep the, uh, the texture actually visible, because even if you look in between the lines, the textures are still there. It's just drawing the wireframe on top of that. And you can go and toggle that and turn it, uh, turn it off for all. Let's grab a smaller layer, turn it on. So you can see, and it's also a very easy way of seeing exactly where that's being shown. If you can't find exactly, if a layer is very faint, you can turn this on to see exactly where it's being used. So with that, that's pretty much the basics of how you can use layers. Again, it's just, it's the, the method you go about, or the method you use to apply multiple t uh, textures to terrain and, apply and adjust how they appear. Okay, very cool. That's going to wrap up this lesson. Thanks.